sometimes chances are if you have an emissive map it's not going to cover the entire thing it'll just be like a couple little areas so uh, this visual representation isn't going to be as accurate as if we were to actually plug in an emissive map and add it in with rim lighting so we just take these two expressions these two main ones and we'll add static switch parameters to these and finally after that we'll add a static switch parameter after this that just completely disables the emissive expressions so we'll just right click and we'll do parameter static switch and we'll plug this into slot A and we'll grab a constant 0 and we'll plug that into slot B and we'll just go ahead and sling this guy over into A and you'll notice that it disappears because what's happening is well first let's give this parameter a name we'll call it B has emissive map uh, so what's going on is uh, its default value is unchecked right now and when it's unchecked it takes the input from value or from in, it takes the input from slot B and it outputs it and if it's checked it takes the input from slot A and outputs that instead. So it just switches between two uh, two uh, expressions here. So uh, for now we'll give a, a default value of on and that will give us an emissive map. Actually on second thought we'll just leave that off and we'll do the same thing down here. We'll just duplicate this and we'll say B has rim light and plug these in like so and we'll go over here and the rim light turns off because it's taking zero because it's unchecked and it's also taking this because this is unchecked and it's adding zero and zero together and throwing that into the emissive slot but the emissive slot is, is active right now technically because it is uh, receiving information. So what we want to do is give the, oh, I'm, I want to give myself the ability to turn that off to save on instructions. So I could do one last static switch parameter. And I'll plug it in here. And we'll just call this one be enable emissive and I'll leave slot B empty so even if I did turn on the emissive map and the rim light map they're not going to show up unless I enable emissive period so I'll enable it and I'll shoot up to 60 instructions, but if I disable it, it shoots down to 48. So there's our emissive slot. It's quite large. We'll pull this back. Another thing that I see happening is that we want to intensify our specularity. So that's really easy. We'll just multiply that by a spec intensity value. We'll leave it at one for now. And we'll plug we'll plug this guy in. Another useful trick is to right click and you could just go to connect to specular. And if we bring this guy up to like two, you'll notice that our specular highlight starts to go up. Which is pretty cool. And our spec power, if we bring this up to something like 30, that highlight gets a little thinner and thinner. So we'll leave it at 15 and now. And our normal map is, is going to be pretty decent for now, but uh, one thing that we might want to think about adding, and uh, we might as well since we're down here anyways, is uh, functionality for a detail normal. So this is actually pretty easy. You just grab a utility and you mask out the red and the green channel.
and you add in the red and green channel of your detail normal. So we'll just rename that expression to detail normal map. And we'll do the same thing here. You add those guys together and then you grab a append vector and you reappend the blue channel and that gives you uh, your detail normal and uh, one thing that you you ought to do with a detail normal map is give it a different co texture coordinate set than our global one. So to do that we'll just duplicate this guy up here and drag his ass back down here and we'll call this detail normal UV scale and we'll plug that guy over here and when we visualize this we're not really going to be able to see it working so I'm going to go ahead and create another default texture up here so I'll just grab like a black color and I'll zoom in really far and I'll just paint some like black dots or something like that and I'll offset it by 32 make it look like porous rock or something like that just something really simple and I'll actually drag marquee selection control shift C to uh, copy merged and I'm just going to open up Crazy Bump really quick. So Crazy Bump's open. I'm going to click open. I'm just going to go paste height map from clipboard. And this is huge, so let's drag this down a bit. And this creates like a little bit of uh, a stupid normal map here that we could justify as being detailed. And we'll do enhanced normal mount volume and get control over our details here. So we'll just do that and we'll bring the intensity down a bit. And I'll go to save, copy normals to clipboard, come back into Photoshop and I'll just paste that. And so I'll control shift save that as a tar target and we'll call it detail normal map base and then we'll close down crazy bump come back into the UDK and we'll import that as a normal map so now we'll grab that detail normal map and we'll use it as a default texture. And what it did is if we switch to square, it applied that normal map on top of our current normals. And if we come down to detail normal UV scale, we can give this something like a value of 10. And now we have this detail normal map thing going on here.